When you learned to dive, everybody had to face this thing, the recreational dive planner. Or if you're a new student to the world of diving and you're working on your online e-learning or you're working with your instructor in the classroom, this thing can sometimes make life a little tricky. Our goal in this video is to make the recreational dive planner easy peasy to understand so you will rock it out in your online learning or with your instructor in the classroom. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Today we're going to give you an introduction to the recreational dive planner. We're going to try and do this in under five minutes, so we're not going to waste any time. Number one, why do I have to learn about the recreational dive planner in the first place? I'm going to use my computer when I dive. We all should have a basic understanding of the theory behind diving, depth, pressure, time, and what it does to our nitrogen load, and how long we can be underwater in terms of non-decompression limits. So let's get started. So when we look at the front face of the recreational dive planner, we have two tables, table one, table two. On table one, circled in red, along the top, we have depth. This happens to be an imperial dive table, so this depth is in feet. If you were working with a metric dive table, it would be in meters, but obviously this is the deepest point of your dive. Time, inside the blue and white boxes here, we have time in minutes corresponding to the amount of time that we spent underwater during our dive. Surface interval. We'll find surface interval in table two. All of these numbers correspond to the number of minutes between our dives. Pressure groups. All of these alphabetical letters correspond to a pressure group. And a pressure group is a way for us to classify a diver as to how much nitrogen is remaining in his body after any dive. Two other areas to point out on the front of the recreational dive planner here, gray boxes and black boxes. Gray boxes mean that a safety stop is required. That means we've either been underwater long enough or deep enough that it makes absolute sense to make a safety stop. Remember, we are recreational divers. We are not planning to make decompression stops on our way to the surface. The black boxes represent your non-decompression limit. This is the number of minutes that you can remain at any depth along here without requiring a decompression stop on the way to the surface. You will notice that for 100 feet or greater, all of those boxes are gray. What that means is if you reach 100 feet or greater, a safety stop is required on the way back to the surface. On this side of the 100 feet, you'll notice that once you get within three pressure groups over your non-decompression limit, there is a gray box. And so you should perform a safety stop on the way to the surface. Next, let's take a look at how we draw out a dive profile. First, we're gonna start out with what is my pressure group prior to my dive? The vertical portion corresponds to depth, either in meters or feet, time in minutes. This is the amount of time that we have spent underwater during our dive, what is our bottom time. We may see this horizontal line which corresponds to your uh, safety stop, be that three minutes or five minutes, whatever the protocol of your agency is, your pressure group at the end of a dive. So if you remember, when we descend in the water column, breathing compressed gas, our body is going to gradually start to load nitrogen. Our pressure group changes. Let's take a look at an actual example using the recreational dive planner to figure that out. In this example, it's going to be my first dive of the day. Therefore, I'm an A diver. I am the pressure group A. I'm going to dive to 70 feet or 21 meters for 24 minutes. When we look at the recreational dive planner, we find 70 feet. We're going to come all the way down to 24 minutes and we're going to come back across to find out what is our ending pressure group and I am now a K diver. I like to think of our body as like a reservoir or a bank for nitrogen as we're diving. When we're breathing compressed air, we're going to incur some nitrogen debt as it builds up in our tissues. So, as an A diver at sea level, we're going to have a minimal amount of nitrogen in our system. We're still going to retain some nitrogen even at sea level under one atmosphere of pressure. As a K diver, 70 feet for 24 minutes, we have incurred a nitrogen debt. Therefore, that switches us into a different pressure group. Even after a three minute safety stop, if you performed one, you are not going to eliminate all of this nitrogen that has built up within the reservoir of your body. And so we call this residual nitrogen or residual nitrogen time, RNT, and we measure that in minutes. I want you to remember this concept because it really comes into play when we're calculating repetitive dives, multiple dives in a day. 
your RNT has a significant effect on your subsequent dive's non-decompression limits. So there you have it guys, you today learned the very basics of how to calculate a basic dive profile using table one here. On the next video, we are gonna jump into repetitive diving, how do we use this table and the one on the back. So click the link down below me and check out repetitive diving using the RDP in under five minutes.